You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe and worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Weekly Business Hour. Thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Rick Schisler. I'm a Silver Fox advisor, as well as the founder of OneBestConsult.com. You've come to the right place if you want to talk about business, because that's what we do here. We talk about everything business, particularly as it relates to the smaller businesses in our community and throughout the world. Today, I think we've lined up a really good show, and hopefully we'll provide you with information, tips, ideas that you can utilize immediately in your business if you so choose. That's one of the main things we try to do with this show. One of our main goals is to give you information, ideas that you can use in your business. I also want to thank, uh, before we get started, thank OneBestConsult.com. That's the number one, BestConsult.com. As I mentioned earlier, I'm the founder of that website. It's a place where small business owners, managers can go. You can post a question. You can sign up to get our newsletter, our video cast, no cost. Uh, a place for you if you've got something to talk about, you've got an issue in your business uh, that you'd like some other opinions. Uh, and these are opinions typically from other business people. Or if you'd like to engage me as a mentor and advisor to your business. That's what I do for a living. I have over 40 years experience working in small business. I owned, developed, and sold five different businesses in my career, as well as growing up in a small business that grew into a fairly large business. So I've seen a lot, and I try to share my common sense business experience. That's what we're all about, common sense experience. Uh, don't try to talk about anything that's new and different, and it'll solve your problems in three minutes if you just add water and heat. We talk about common sense experience. What can we learn from the experiences we had, and what can we learn from the experience that our fellow small business people from around the country and a few from around the world? But let's get to it. Let's get the show going and get the show on the road, as they used to say. Uh, we're going to start off today. Uh, before we do, I want to let you know the show is broadcast live on Facebook Live. So if you want to see us as well as hear us, then go to our Facebook page, The Weekly Business Hour, and click on the live button, and you can watch as well as listen. Also, if during the show you have a question uh, for one of our guests, for me, or just a question about the show or a comment, email it to me, please, right here at the station at Rick at IRLoneStar.com. That's Rick, R-I-C-K, at IRLoneStar.com. And we'll be glad to take your question and talk about it on the air. Many times questions come in after we go off the air, and I talk about them the following week from time to time. So please, at any time, send us your questions, your ideas, your observations, your concerns, anything you want to talk about relating to small business and business in general. I'd love to get your questions. Well, I'm going to start off today in a little bit different order than we normally do. We're trying to mix things up here in the new year. I'm going to start with our Did You Know series. Did you know? Did you know you can get more done in the same amount of time? Well, I assume you did, or most of you do, because uh, productivity is a huge factor in business. It's a factor that many businesses, particularly small businesses, don't pay a lot of attention to. Larger businesses do. They measure it. They use it in the production of their services, their, their goods, their products. Uh, everything is on the clock, so to speak, and that's, that's one measure of productivity. But I want to talk a little bit about your productivity, your productivity as the leader, as the owner, the manager of your business. Uh, because, again, I'm not trying to talk about any the latest, greatest solution uh, that comes in a box and costs you only $14.95 a month. I'm talking about some things that you can do personally. If you just grab hold and look at what you're doing and what you're not doing, you're making choices every day in your business about what you're going to focus on, what you're going to do. 
And I think it's very important that you try to consistently, and that's a key word in this conversation, that you consistently make the right choices. In other words, take on the projects, uh, the opportunities, the conversations with employees, vendors, customers. Try to choose the ones that increase the value of your business. The value of your business. A customer conversation versus a conversation with a vendor. Which one's more important if you only have a certain amount of time? Well, to me, a customer conversation is important if the conversation itself increases the value of your business. In other words, develops the relationship with that customer. That customer grows into an important customer of your business. Vendor relationships are always important. Don't disregard them. Don't put them off forever, but they are something that could be rescheduled. And these are the kind of things I want to talk about. I'm going to offer you three basic ideas. First of all, I encourage you to focus on just one thing at a time. You know, this old story about when you're talking to somebody, you need to learn to listen. You need to focus on that conversation at hand. So many times we've got so many things banging around in our head. Our to-do list, the mental list, the written list, it is just pushing us that we got to get things done and we got to get them done quick, that we lose focus on what we're doing right now in that conversation with someone or working on something, a uh, project at our desk, uh, projections for the next year, whatever it might be, but we lose our focus and concentration. And if you want to get more things done, you've got to stay focused on what's at hand, what you're doing right now. It's the most important thing. Block out those distractions and focus on one thing at a time. You know, multitasking uh, was an idea that I think its time has come and perhaps gone. Uh, I know I always had trouble with it because whenever I multitask three or more things at one time, I tend to eventually mess up, and that's a nice word for it. Uh, I'd mess up, and I would drop the ball, and one thing wouldn't get done, and somehow I thought, well, that got done. Well, it didn't because I had so many balls in the air, so many things I was trying to push at one time. Focus on one thing. And the second thing, and I think this is something you can learn and you can teach yourself, say no to things that don't increase the value of your company, your business. Say no to those kind of things. A lot of times these are opportunities. Uh, they come from vendors. They come from customers. But if you look at that opportunity, think about it for a moment, and say, gosh, what is that going to add to our business here? One more sale, okay, makes sense. Uh, a, a product that we can buy from a vendor at a lower price, better delivery, whatever it might be, okay, that makes sense. But the idea is that when you rate things, say on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest, you want to focus on the 9s and the 10s. So many times we stop what we're doing or we put it on the schedule, put it on our things to do, and it's things that we don't need to be doing because there are a lot other better opportunities right at hand that if we do them, they will increase the value of our business. And I keep coming back to that, increase the value of your business. That's what it's all about. I'm going to work on an assumption going forward that you want to increase the value of your business. You want to grow your business because that's why a lot of people are in business. Yes, some people are happy, they're, you know, day in and day out. But let me encourage you, with today's world that's revolving around us, business, technology, things happen so fast that if you don't focus on creating value, then you're going to get left behind, left out in a way that might surprise a lot of people. A business failure is ultimately what happens. You've got to focus on creating value in your business. You've got to grow your business. You're going to be replacing customers, pieces of business. It's happening every day. Clients I work with, even in small, small businesses, they have to continue to look for growth opportunities. But they also, of course, have to address their current business and take care of it in the best way possible. So the second thing is don't take on projects. Don't take on an employee. That happens all the time. We have somebody working for us, and they take up a disproportionate of our amount of our time. They have issues. They could, you know, they could be a nice guy, but they don't, you know, turn out the product. They don't 
service enough accounts, whatever it might be, you've got to look at that and say, no, that won't work for me. I like the guy, but he can't work for me. So learn to say no. Second thing, or third thing, excuse me, is to cut your losses. If you see a situation, such as the example with the employee, and it's not working out, cut it loose. If you've invested in something, if you've taken on a new product, you've done an expansion, whatever it might be, and it's not working, cut your losses and move on. There are lots of other opportunities, in my opinion, for every business out there. It's just a matter of looking up, looking out, and engaging in the right situations that add value. But don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid to cut your losses and tie it off. Last but not least, uh, the old idea that you need to support your winners uh, and, and, you know, just starve or lose your losers. Now, that's not just about individuals. That's not just about uh, people that work for you. Look at customers. This is one of the hardest thing I ever do when working with my clients is we go through their customers, okay? And you may have hundreds of customers, maybe thousands, and you have a storefront or multiple storefronts there are a way to get rid of the bad customers. And I guarantee if you look at the situation honestly with open eyes and open mind, you will see there's a certain percentage of your customers. That's true in every business I've ever personally been involved in that I have ever personally mentored or advised. There are customers, there are vendors, there are situations that need to be cut loose. You need to not spend the inordinate amount of time. Uh, once upon a time, I was in a business, I had clients. It was a professional service business, and we were taught to rate our clients A, B, C, A being the greatest client, the one that did a fair amount of business, the one who paid their bill on time was an A. A B, maybe not so much business, or maybe they paid their bill in 45 days instead of within 30 days. But the, And C was the one who didn't pay his bill, the one that perhaps complained every time we served them. Uh, we needed to cut those people loose. And I was taught that in the professional service business. You've got to cut those people loose. And it doesn't have to be a confrontation. You just need to cut them loose and move on to what you're doing. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, I'm going to zero in just for a few minutes about how to focus more diligently on the marketing advertising that you're doing in your business and hopefully offer you a couple ideas that'll not only save costs but increase your business with the same spend the same amount of money that you're spending on marketing so please stay with us we'll be right back with you it's all business talk on the weekly business hour every monday at 11 a.m right here on lone star community radio a Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 647 3776 to take your first step into the radio world. From the beginning, the main purpose of the Cooperative Extension Service has been to change human behavior by teaching people how to apply the results of scientific research. By utilizing a holistic, multi level approach, Extension Family and Community Health Programs encourage health and well being for everyone, addressing values, concerns, and needs with reliable science based information. Extension programs help people lead healthier lives. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make their lives better. For business ideas and news you can use, join us on the weekly business hour every Monday at 11 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio. You are listening to the weekly business hour, and this is Rick Schisler. I'm your host, and welcome back. I want to continue our conversation about productivity, specifically productivity in your marketing. But before I do that, I want to mention to you that a podcast of today's show will be available on Wednesday of this week, a podcast and video cast. Uh, you can pick it up right at our website. 
That's it, one, the number one, bestconsult.com. Go to the website, click on the video, and you will see a video cast that you can watch and listen concerning today's show. Well, let's talk about marketing and productivity just for, for a couple, three minutes, because marketing is the number one topic. Whenever you take a survey, whenever you hold a seminar, whenever you ask people, what would you like to talk about? Marketing, by far, is the topic that everybody Every small business wants to talk about it. It's always at the top of most people's list. So I want to talk about how you can look at productivity and marketing together. You know, doing your marketing right, whatever you're doing or not doing, if you do it right, it's a real difference maker. I mean, it's the difference between really successful businesses and those that struggle, they hang on, they don't move, they don't grow. Doing your marketing right, and taking the amount of money, your budget and whatnot, and spending it in the most efficient way is a real difference maker. I have three ideas for you, and I did this in my career in a business I owned way back when, and it's one of the best things I ever learned, and it really paid off. First of all, look at your numbers. In other words, when you spend a dollar in marketing, whether it's for advertising or some other part of your marketing plan, you need to understand what your rate of return is on that dollar. And the first thing you've got to do is you've got to find out in the numbers, you've got to see it as an investment. It's it's so critical. People look at marketing, advertising, it's an expense. And so when things get difficult, we've all heard this, they cut that expense. But it's an investment in your future, and it's very, very important you do. And the first thing you've got to do is determine – And and don't lose me on this because a lot of folks say I can't do this, but I've done it. It's not that difficult. It just takes a little bit of time. What can you afford to spend to bring a new customer client on board? In other words, how much can you spend to capture some new business? Uh, And you can identify that. You can really begin to understand. First of all, you can do it historically. Go back and see how much you spent say last year or last quarter, how many new customers, clients, amount of business that was brought in, take a bit of time, analyze it, perhaps go over it with your accountant. If you've got an in-house person, a a comptroller or CFO or whatever, or maybe you wear all those hats, but take some time, run your calculator, right, and analyze those numbers. And the business I was in personally, that I, as a startup, and then as we progressed, We identified that we could afford $750. It was a high-end service business, and it it really, everybody sat back on their heels. They could not believe we could afford that much to bring in a client. But first year's projected business is one formula against what we spent to get them. Absolutely was. It changed our marketing. We invested more in certain things, and the number of clients that we brought in the following period was just right on point. So first, identify what you can afford to bring a new piece of business, new client or customer on board. The second thing is to analyze the tactics. And this kind of gets down to the efficiency and the productivity of what you're doing. Look at what you've done, look at where you've done it, and look at what paid off. Again, some history here. If you're a startup, you need to look around the industry. You need to look at what other people are doing and do your own set of numbers, your own set of projections of what you want a customer, a new piece of business to bring you. So put that down. What do I want out of this new piece of business? I want $5,000 a year. It makes sense because we do this, 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 and and this is conservative. And if they bring five in, what can I afford to spend to get that additional $5,000. And don't forget, that number changes over time because as your business grows and hopefully you become more efficient, you can acquire customers and you keep more of each new dollar coming in flows to your bottom line. So you can afford, hypothetically, to spend more to get that customer in because you have more, because you're making more. And again, it depends on your growth, what you're trying to do with the business, a lot of other factors, but that should have already been decided. What I'm trying to do is get you to look at the customer and see what it takes. Productivity is can be approached in a lot of ways. First of all, you can take your marketing activities and say cut the bottom quarter percent or half, 
cut half of your marketing activities out. Now do this on paper and say if we didn't do those things and we took this money and applied it to the top half, in other words, the things that are really making a difference, that are bringing business in, take the bottom half, cut it out, take the same dollars, not a bigger budget, take it to the top. And the same thing, of course, applies to anything you do within the business, whether it be your product or service lines, your client base, et cetera. So take a look at this. Productivity in your marketing can greatly be increased, can be increased if you analyze what you can afford, what it takes to bring a new client in, a new piece of business. And I dare say that a vast majority of people that listen and watch this segment have not done that because they think it's too hard. And it really isn't that hard. Just pull out some historical records or look at your industry, look at your competitors, put a scenario together. First year business is one I like. I have the products and services in a customer conservatively should spend X with us. Then you say, okay, what can I afford to bring them in? What's it worth? And it's not that hard. Yes, it's based on some assumptions, but doing this thing will increase your productivity, increase your efficiency, and your marketing dollar will go a lot further. Well, we're going to take another short break, and I'm going to come back and offer you my one best consult tip of the week. You want to own a business? What are some of the major challenges you might face? So please stay with us. We'll be right back at you. Not sure who to turn to when you have a problem in your business? Listen to the Weekly Business Hour on Lone Star Community Radio. Lone Star Community Radio is ready for the summer. If you or anyone you know is looking for a summer internship, Lone Star Community Radio is a great place to learn the radio and TV business. Contact the station at info at IRLoneStar.com or call the station's message line at 936-647-3776. Lone Star Community Radio offers a great opportunity to those interested in learning about the radio world. This is Rick, TRC. Every Tuesday on my show, Afternoons with Lone Star, from 3 to 7, I play back-to-back classic rock hits. That's right. I like to call it a two-for Tuesday or a three-for whatever it is you'd like. Call the request line, 936-647-3776, or message me on Facebook, Afternoons with Lone Star, make a music request. That's right, you can do it. Here's what else. Go over to our website, IRLoneStar.com. Get the app on your phone. It's easy. You'll like it. Not sure who to turn to when you have a problem in your business? Listen to the Weekly Business Hour on Lone Star Community Radio. You are listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler. I'm proud to say I'm your host today. I'm a Silver Fox advisor and the founder of OneBestConsult.com. I want to talk to you just for a few minutes about your desire to own a business, or if you already own the business, I don't want to mistake it. If you want to own a business or you already own, the fact is you want to own a business. Now you either got it or you're going to get it. And there are some major challenges, and I'm going to continue this conversation next week as well. But I want to touch on a few right off the bat of challenges that you need to be aware of, in my opinion, to build the successful business that I hope you're looking for. And the first one, cash flow management. Cash is king. You've probably read that expression somewhere or heard it. It is absolutely true. It is the lifeblood of any business. So when you go into business or you're in business, monitor your cash. Okay, if there's any other financial number in the world that you think you need to keep an eye on, that's cool, but you must keep an eye and monitor your cash flow. Cash flow management, a key challenge, and it really is. People say, well, I don't have enough money, I didn't, but are you managing your cash flow? Very, very important. Lack of planning. I have found it, unfortunately, almost universal that people that go into small business and operate small businesses just have almost a disdain for planning. Yes, I've met some corporate types who left the corporate world, went in business for self, that do a good job with it. But for the vast majority of us, we just don't do any planning. You need to not only build the plan before you go into the business or if you're taking on a new product line, a new service area, you're expanding, put together some kind of plan. 
Uh, it's your roadmap to success, the way I like to look at it. And we're going to be talking about roadmap to success and a little later in the program regarding mergers and acquisitions and how to grow by using them. But if you have a plan, let me tell you, the, it is so important because it helps build your confidence in yourself and your business. So if you've got the plan, you're executing the plan, and it's working, you build your confidence. Don't forget that. You have a lack of knowledge or lack of experience. A lot of people start businesses in areas and fields they may know something about. They may have worked for someone in a similar business, or they may not have any experience in that business. They just think it's a good idea, something they came up with themselves, or they bought a franchise. But the fact is, if I've worked for someone else, I still lack experience, such as cash flow management. I've got to get that experience somewhere, and I need to always be learning and that's a thing, again, another item that gets pushed to the back of the list that falls off the table many times and gets forgotten. Find a mentor or an advisor. That's what I do. I, when I was in business and owned my businesses, I had mentors and advisors. I grew up naturally in a family business, and we had lots of positive mentoring. It is a crucial element in your success to have people help you not make as many mistakes as you would make if you didn't have them. So consider that. Be sure you take into consideration that you don't understand everything, even though you might think you do. And lastly today, I want to talk about improper pricing. Pricing is difficult for us in small business, typically. We either mimic the guy down the street who's a competitor, or we add 30% or this and that, Pricing can bring you a lot more money if it's done properly. And it really boils down, in my opinion, in my experience, to tweaking. It's to be aware of what your cost and all these things are. You want to make a profit. But looking at the pricing of your main products, your main services, because if they're not main, don't forget, we should cut them loose perhaps. But the idea is if you have the right pricing, obviously, you ensure the sufficient revenues and profit. But the thing is that, uh, you know, it just gets down to, well, what do I think somebody might pay? That's not the right way to approach pricing. Think about your pricing, whether you're a low price competitor or high price, great service, whatever where you put yourself in the market, it's still about pricing. And you need to take the time to do the pricing that benefits your business, that creates more value in your business. We're going to take our bottom of the hour break, and I am pleased to tell you that uh, on the other side, we've got a great guest coming in and joining us. John Stacy of Avacoach is coming in, and he's going to talk to us about uh, a roadmap to success, mergers and acquisitions. So can your business grow through a merger or an acquisition of another business? I believe it can. Even the smallest business can acquire a business or merge with another business to reach the goals that you as an individual owner and manager have for your business. So please stay with us. We're going to take a break. And then when we come back, we'll have John Stacy Advocates with us. It's all about business on the weekly business hour every Monday at 11 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio. An estimated 1 in 10 births will result in a neonatal intensive care stay, also known as the NICU. Overnight, a family can find themselves and their newborn baby in a critical situation. The Mila Foundation financially and spiritually assists families in need. If you would like to volunteer or become a monthly sponsor, please visit us at www.themilafoundation.org. Again, that's www.themilafoundation.org. Because every life matters. Our talk shows and music shows are looking for sponsors. Want to expand your brand awareness? reach the hyper-local audience in Montgomery County? Lone Star Community Radio sponsorships accomplish this. Want to see our stats and rates? Check out IRLoneStar.com sponsor for more information. Or call in and leave us a message at 936-647-3776. For business ideas and news you can use, join us on the weekly business hour every Monday at 11 a.m. on Lone Star Community Radio. 
Health Center Southeast Texas is a federally qualified health center. We accept Medicare, Medicaid, and most major private insurances. For our self-pay patients, we have a sliding scale discount program available. Our health centers have qualified providers and staff striving every day to provide the best quality of care to our patients. Services offered are family medicine, behavioral health services, telepsychiatry, and pediatrics. We have four area locations. Look up the Health Center Southeast Texas online at hcset.com. You are listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler, your host. I want to thank you again for being with us today. Uh, before we get started in this hour, I want to let you know again that a podcast video cast of today's program is available at YouTube as well as Facebook, the Weekly Business Hour page. If you missed something in the first half hour, you want to share it with a friend, uh, that's where you go. Go to YouTube, Facebook, the Weekly Business Hour, and after Wednesday of this week, that'll be available. It'll be the entire show. Also want to thank our show sponsor, OneBestConsult.com. That's the number one, BestConsult.com, a great place to go get common sense experience. When you have a question about something happening in your business or not happening, as the case may be, go to onebestconsult.com. Well, today, as I mentioned at the, before we went to break, we have John Stacy, Advocate Coach. Uh, in a soup to nuts conversation, I think it's going to have a lot in it for almost every business, particularly if you have some degree of success and you're ready to move on and move up. And we're going to talk about a roadmap to success issue entitled Mergers and Acquisitions. Can your business grow through a merger with another business or perhaps through the purchase of another business? Lots of options there. And many times people write, John, they, they discount the idea that, well, I can't buy another business or merger. What's that? Let's well, talk about it. Well, let's talk about it. And Rick, uh, glad to be here today. Let's talk about mergers and acquisitions. But before I get started, I really wanted to talk a little bit about the stats. 2018, 39 trillion dollars were invested in uh, in the M&A process. Think about that. 3.9 T. That's T trillion. Uh, so that's pretty fantastic. But 60 to 70 percent of those are going to fail. And, and, you know, as you start thinking about failures, a lot of it has to do with they didn't have a roadmap or they didn't follow the best advice out there to be successful. And it doesn't matter whether you're a small business or a large business. There's still what I look at as eight steps that if we really follow those steps, it increases our odds of being successful. And so many, uh, many acquisitions fall short of success. So we're going to talk about those eight things. Uh, and in addition to that, just thinking about this, 10,000 people turn 65 every day. I'm not sure if you knew that, but 10,000 people will be turning 65. A lot of those are business owners, and they're going to have to do something with their businesses at, short, at you know, a short period of time. And this 10,000 people is going to be going on for about the next 15 years. So huge opportunity. So if you're, if you're in a position that you want to buy a company, now is a great time to really be looking. But let's get into the steps on the M&A process that if you follow these, uh, you're going to be much more successful. Well, let me make a couple of comments, maybe kind of back up a second, because it's something that it's funny. You mentioned uh, three plus trillion dollars, uh, but you, I've been a business reader for, I don't know, 40 years now, 50 years, I guess. And boy, I age myself. But I love to read about big companies. They mess this up so bad to the point that when I read something like IBM recently acquired Red Hat, a big software, multi-billion dollars, and I've always been a believer that could be a small business and the price may be thousands of dollars, but the same idea. And when I read things like that, and I, in the back of my mind, I said, I want to sell that stock. <laughs> and, and this is no reflection right. on IBM. But so many, and I think you used a number 60 to 70 percent, don't work. Well, I've read all those stories for so many years. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting challenge, but I also great opportunity, right? It's, it's absolutely a great great opportunity. Now, when you bring up G, uh, that, I bring up GE and uh, Baker Hughes. Thought this was going to be the best merger forever, but the fact of the matter is, in a relatively short period of time, it failed. In that particular case, in my opinion, it really had to do not so much with the numbers, but with cultures, and they had clashing, cult, clashing cultures. And we'll talk a little bit about those things as we evaluate companies. There's a lot of things you need to look at. It's not just the benefits. It's not just the finance. And they talk about synergy. And synergy is kind of all about one plus one equals three. 
Well, in a lot of these mergers, one plus one equals one and a half. And that's really where the failure comes in. And they didn't follow a lot of these steps. Or if they didn't follow this, if they followed the steps, uh, they took some shortcuts. And so I think that ends up being a very important discussion to help people, whether it's a million dollar company or a multi billion dollar company, the steps are the same. Second point I want to make, and be sure our listeners who are typically small business people, if I have a business, say, doing a million dollars in revenue, and I've been growing, say, I'm five, 10 years in and been successful, and I want to grow to two or three million, I mean, I, because that's either personal or whatever all of it. I mean, I think you got to have some real solid business reasons of where you grow to. But I'm a candidate to buy another business in Merchant, aren't I? I mean, well, you're absolutely a candidate. Uh, and, you know, there's a couple different ways you can grow a business. You can grow it organically, and I'm just going to keep doing these things. And I have an office in Houston, for example, and they buy uh, – uh, open up in Austin and Dallas or San Antonio, and that's that's one way I can grow. Another way is really finding someone that is going to uh, be someone that I want to acquire, and and so then we can talk about strategic purchases. Uh, actually, I'm working on uh, one uh, th- currently that it's uh, similar businesses. Products are about the same, but what's going to happen when they come together is that instead of having a couple of regional companies, you have a nationwide presence. So that's one of those things that's a strategic purchase. There's also financial purchases. So there's a diff- different ways that you can look at what you can do to acquire a company. And I want people to understand that, again, small businesses, a million dollars, probably even a half a million. I mean, these things can be done in the neighborhood. They don't have to be done across the country. But I've actually seen small business uh, – on one side of the country merge or uh, buy business on the other side of the country geographically 1,000, 2,000 miles apart and be very successful because of the business they were in, the industries they were in. Uh, There was synergy there. So let's kind of start, you know, again, if you're a small business, I hope you'll listen to this and not just think it's the IBM and the GEs and and the ones that mess it up all the time, <laughs> at least historically. Right. Uh, we're talking to you as small business people, and it's a great way to grow your business if it's done properly. And the key, in my opinion, is we have a process, right? There's a process. Eight-step process in this case. It makes sense. Absolutely. There is a plan. And, and you can go out there and research, and there's six-step processes. There's 10-step processes. If you have a consistent process, though, and you follow these steps, the odds of being successful are extremely high. And so why don't we get started and sure. talk about the first thing. And the first thing is strategy. And, you know, uh, several months ago we talked about uh, uh, strategic plan. You, your business should have a strategic plan. When we start talking about the M&A process and having a, a strategy, it is what are we looking for? What exactly do we want to accomplish if we are to purchase a company? And that might be fina- uh, financial things. Uh, that may be different product offerings. That may be buying part of your supply chain. So there's a lot of different reasons. But you've got to be thinking, what's my tra- strategy? What am I going to accomplish? How much do I want to invest? You know, you talked earlier today about cash flow. How much do I want to invest? How much do I want to borrow? So it's really about having that strategy in place so that I know that when I'm talking to someone, And this goes both ways. If I want to sell my company or if I want to buy a company, I have to have a strategy. You know, one of those things, and I think there's a great opportunity based on my experience, failure as well as success, is take that strategy and use parts of it as a checklist. And when I look at another business, either to merge or acquire, I've got to have five to ten things, this is my opinion, that that company has to satisfy, that opportunity has to check those things off. Uh, It's only when I didn't follow the strategy, got emotional, my first first deal, and it was not successful. And then on, it worked because I followed it. I learned the hard way, if you will. But having that strategy gives one a checklist, right? to work through a a template or a roadmap, as you've said. Absolutely, and I think you said one word, and it's emotion. You can't have an emotion about what you're going to purchase or what you're going to sell. Emotions can't be in the equation, because when we put the emotions in it, uh, we start making bad decisions, because we really want it. Uh, And I've seen companies that have been in a position where uh, they've gone out, they've done some other things, they've done their due diligence, Uh, they said, okay, it makes sense, uh, and, and then they decide they're going to go ahead and purchase it. 
but the reason they purchased it was more emotional because it was the right thing to do. And if they had looked at everything that they had done in their due diligence, they would not have done the deal. You can't have emotion in the transaction. Well, and I would submit to you that not only they did, perhaps didn't do what they, in their due diligence, but they did not have a good quality process in place, right? Yep. When they started. I would agree. Uh, and I think small, large, it doesn't medium, it doesn't matter. You screw up this part of the deal, you don't have a map. What happens when we don't have a map? Potential to get lost skyrockets. Well, let's move through this process. This is exciting. So we, you know, we've really sat there and we've developed a strategy of what we want, what we're going to accomplish. The next step, uh, to me, is really identifying targets. So if you're in this business, you know your competitors. You know people that would fit in that match your strategy. And then it's a matter of beginning to contact these people that you would be interesting. Uh, interested in buying and there's some things that have to happen through that process but there's a number of people that say okay I'm interested in this company this company and this company because those companies match my strategy and by the way if you want to sell your company you can actually be doing the same thing because if you want to sell you know that this company or this company or this company are going to be companies that may be interested in buying me just because they fit our strategy well it makes a lot of sense and again back to having that map some, you know what you're looking for, the emotions, which got which tripped me up, so I know that, I know that pain. Get out of the, follow the plan. Just leave everything else out if you can. If you're a good accountant, you can do this. Some of us, though, have, <laughs> we don't have that black and white mind, right? Well, yeah, and I've got a finance background, so I kind of have that black and white mind. I've got to sometimes watch that emotion. Uh, so so we've, we've identified some targets. Uh, we now need to figure out what's the next step. And the next uh, step really is about information. It's about information exchange, okay? And when it comes down to it, regardless of which way this transaction is going, both parties need to provide information. Most of the information is going, for, is going to be going from the, uh, acqu the acquiree to the acquirer. And that's going to be financial information. It's going to be inf uh, other information about uh, employees. It's going to be information about insurance. It's going to be a lot of basic information. But I'm going to say this initial uh, amount of information is more about financial. And that's because of my financial background. Because what's this information going to be used for? Okay, uh, this information is going to be used to really look at how do I value the company. Uh, but through this, we're also going to make sure that we've signed a confidentiality agreement. Uh, as any of these conversations start, we need to make sure some legal things are in place. Confidentiality is in place uh, and submission of a letter of intent so we can start this discussion process. Uh, in a lot of cases, we want to keep this really, really tightly held to a very small number of people. We don't want the whole company to know what's going on on either side of it. So we want to make sure that we put some things in place to protect ourselves. Well, and it makes a lot of sense. And I, one thing I'm going to comment based on my experience, the quality of the information I get. You know, I had a red flag in that first opportunity I mentioned to you. They ran like 13 or 14 runs to try to produce financials, okay, to button it down. And, and the guy doing the work was a CPA. He was on staff. And they they stacked up seriously. And this was the days where we had the big computer paper. <laughs> right. It stacked up five feet high. And they couldn't tie certain things on the balance sheet down. And that was a red flag. And I should have looked at that stack and said, hey, these people don't know their numbers. They don't. But instead, I said, there's an opportunity because I had people working with me. We could get those numbers under control. But how do you buy something if you don't know what it's worth? Well, you, you, <laughs> you know, and actually some people, because of emotions, do because they think it's going to fit. But the fact of the matter is, if you can't get to that information, that is absolutely a red flag. And I think that in a, in a conversation at a later date, maybe we ought to talk about what do you need to do to get ready to sell your company? Because there's about eight things that you can do to increase the value of your company. And I think that that's, that's an important discussion also. Uh, we're talking more on the acquirer side today. Uh, but there's what do I need to, if I want to sell my company, back to those people that are getting ready to retire, if I want to sell my company, it's my biggest asset. What do I need to do to change some things over the next three to five years? Because, you know, you don't wake up one morning and say, huh, I'm going to sell my company today. It's really a thought process that you have to go through, and it's a three- to five-year process to really get ready if you want to maximize the value of your company when you exit. 
Well, you're right, and it gets down to maximize. You can sell your company. You can wake up one morning and call somebody, I want to sell my business. But the value that what you'll leave on the table, and I've had some experience with clients doing this and talked them out of it, thank goodness, you know, batting 100 on that or 1,000 on that one. <laughs> Uh, in fact, one's still in business eight years later, uh, but their value was skyrocketing, and it, they were going to leave it all on the table. And we're talking about significant money in some cases as a percentage of the value of the business. So I think that's advice well given. Well, John, we're going to take a short break now. All right. Uh, allow our sponsors and people to speak to uh, those who are listening. And when we come back, we're going to continue this conversation. And, again, I hope you will uh, pull out your pad and pencil. I always encourage that. Make some notes. And uh, send us questions if you have any uh, now or after the show. Just send them to rick at irlonestar.com. But hang in there. We'll be right back with you. A Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 647 3776 to take your first step into the radio world. Did you know there are more than 790 abused and neglected children currently in foster care in Montgomery County? Will you help make a difference? I'm Allie Stevens with Costa Child Advocates of Montgomery County. We train and support volunteers to be the voice of children in the foster care system. Kids are moved from their home because of abuse and neglect, and we need volunteers just like you to advocate for these children. To learn more about becoming an advocate, please visit costaspeaksforkids.com. That's costaspeaksforkids.com. It's all business talk on the weekly business hour every Monday at 11 a.m. right here on Lone Star Community Radio. You are listening to the weekly business hour, and this is Rick Schisler, your host. We're having a soup to nuts conversation here with John Stacy regarding a roadmap to success, mergers and acquisitions. Well, John... We've talked about strategy development. We've talked about identifying and contacting targets and also about information requests, which is a topic that we need to explore much deeper right. sometime in the future, and I appreciate your offer. Let's talk about valuation and synergies. Boy, that's, got, that's an important topic. What do we need to do to assure our success in this area? Well, we just finished up talking a few minutes ago about providing information, financial information, employee information, historical information, that type of thing. What are you going to do with that information? Well, that's where the time comes that we really need to determine a value. What's this company worth? So there's a number of different ways we can go about do that. But remember, as we're talking about this, there's always two sides of a transaction. There's the buyer and the seller. Uh, the seller has an idea what they want for the company. Okay, and in a lot of cases that may be blood, sweat, and tears. And uh, I think most of you know that uh, the valuation of a company has not a lot to do with blood, sweat, and tears. That's the emotional piece of it. I've worked so hard to accomplish this, I want X amount of dollars. Okay, well, that's great, but from a buyer's perspective, is what are they going to get out of it? Okay, back to that one plus one equals two. Am I going to be able to get that? And so it comes down to how do I value the company? And so there's a number of different ways you can go about valuing the company. Uh, so we can go through a couple of those. Uh, there's value of assets. So, so if you're just buying the company's assets, that ends up being simple, but you're not maximizing the value of the company because you're not taking into account revenue and those types of things. Uh, there's discounted cash flows. The challenge with, to me, discounted cash flows is it's a look back. Okay, I'm working uh, or have been working with a client that – uh, they've gone through the last couple of years have, with a pretty rapid expansion, okay? They've invested all their cash, talk, back to talking about cash, haven't borrowed money, uh, but they've invested their cash in uh, this, this growth, and they've gone from about two locations to ten locations in the last two years. Well, they've lost a substantial amount of money. When you start looking at discounted cash flows, it, the company doesn't look like it has a whole lot of value, except the, the revenue has gone from $4 million 
uh, to about 8 million uh, in 2020 is our estimate. And, and we can show that growth, and we can also show the growth in the profitability of the company. So when you start, when you look backwards, that discounted kind of cash flow is, is shows a negative. When you look forward, it shows a pretty significant profitability increase. And when I look at their results for 2019, significant improvement year over year. You know, so how, how do you really start taking a look at those things? And, you know, so there's multiples of EBITDA, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, uh, and amortization. Uh, I think that's, that's probably the most common valuation technique that's used. Uh, but with that, in the SDE, which is seller's discretionary income, a lot of small business owners out there take a lot of money out of their company. Okay? That's, that's the fact. And, and quite frankly, we sit there and we're probably going to take as much out of the company as we can to show that we don't make a lot of profit. Well, from a, from a valuation perspective, that's also a challenge. Because uh, but if you really start taking a look at it and you say, okay, well, uh, if I had a manager instead of the owner, I'd be taking 100000 out instead of 500000 I can start look when I, can, when I start looking at that valuation, it really increases the value of the company because you wouldn't necessarily be uh, – taking that much money out and travel and a lot, a, lot of those, a lot of those things. So there's a lot of different ways to value the company, uh, but the key is both sides are working on it, and that's before we really get to the next step, which is the offer and negotiation. Well, there's a lot there, and I, I guarantee you there's a, what I call a, when you do those add backs for small business, they can be very significant and people need to be aware of them. Uh, and there's nothing right. We Small business people live out of their business in some cases. I see more and more, though, that people really t tend to shy away from that. But again, like you said, you've got to approach this with a three- to five-year window if you really want to maximize. Don't yeah. have to do anything because you own the business, but I encourage people, minimum three years, and uh, to clean up things and make sure, because it gets down to the goal. My goal now is to sell the business, right? And I'll do things differently than if I was expanding the business. Exactly. Like you mentioned, cash flow, adding locations. Well, John, I appreciate it today. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, John, if people want to reach out to you and get some more information about this, how do they do it? Uh, the, uh, my email address is jstacy at advocoach, A-D-V-I-C-O-A-C-H dot com. That's like an advisor coach dot com probably the simplest way to get in touch with me and I'd be more than uh, happy to talk to anybody and help them through whatever their process is whether it's buying or selling a company. Well I appreciate that and ladies and gentlemen just make a note we're going to continue this conversation over the next couple of weeks part two and three as we go through some of the other aspects of buying or merging with a business so I encourage you to listen in and I encourage you next week 11 o'clock soup to nuts conversation with John Avacoach and we're going to talk about the second part of this and again, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks to One Best Consult for being our sponsor today. And I encourage you, as always, to stick with your business. And most importantly, pay attention and do the things that are important for your business. Until next week, have a great week.